what I had locked down in our special relationship was actually a whole lot of deep beliefs about really loving others. And when we went through this work, I realized that my terror was vulnerability. And that in fact, until I can let go of my grip on Raj, I can't experience that intimacy with others. Uh, when, after I went through the experience in Bali, I had a thing where, where I was really kind of shown that, that God would have us like princes or kings and queens walking through the Garden of Eden in an absolutely ecstatic love with each other, all absolutely enchanted by each other. This, this deep, deep intimacy. That's how we were created to be. And so what I'm finding now is that even moments with Helena, we'll turn to each other and there's like this, this light that transpires and then this intimacy, these deep hugs and things. And it's like, yeah, that's, I feel that's where we're all going, to be in that total presence with each other and the absolute recognition of the Christ in the other and this ecstatic bliss that I'm sure will far outpass sexuality. Some of you know my movie watchers guide to enlightenment. There's a movie in there that uh, George Clooney uh, was guided to do. He, he actually went in. They already had an actor for the part, but he went in and pleaded that he could play the part. But it's called Solaris, and there's a great poem in there. It's really the, the core of releasing specialness and opening the holiness. Though lovers be lost, love shall not, and death shall have no dominion. And the whole movie, George Clooney plays a psychologist who, who goes up to this planet called Solaris, which represents the divine will, that, that you know, your thoughts uh, are instantly made manifest. And, and his wife uh, had committed suicide, and when he goes up to Solaris, he goes to sleep his first night, and his arm comes around, <laughs> and it's her. It's actually a, a, an Australian actress, very, very beautiful. And, and he's just shocked, and he gets up, and he is so terrified because it doesn't fit into his box. You know, dead is dead and gone. <laughs> and her her arm comes around him, and she's so loving, but she conveys to him, you know, that, that she's not. She's kind of confused because she's just playing out what's left uh, in in his mind of of her, uh, not seeing her whole and complete yet. He's still playing things out about the suicide, what he could have done differently, and, and whatever. And when she comes back uh, near Solaris, she's just playing this out. So he's so terrified of her uh, because it doesn't fit into his box that he puts her into like a little pod and it's the eject button <laughs> and sends her away. Uh, then he goes to sleep the second night <laughs> and here she comes again because he's still thinking of her. Uh, so with Solaris, it's like the thoughts are made manifest instantly. And, and then he has to go through forgiveness process of, of that. And in the end, he realizes that he remembered her wrong. Uh, that was his only problem, uh, was he remembered her wrong. And she comes back again at the very end of the movie, you know, and says, everything is forgiven. Everything. Like, you can let go of however you remembered me because the love is, will be there forever. And she gives him this big kiss and it's just it's beautiful. And so that's really what we're opening to is, you know, the ego, through the ego, we remembered our brothers and sisters wrong. We didn't see the Christ in them. And that's all these holy encounters are about, is to see them anew and, and therefore accept it for ourselves. You know, that we're the Christ and they're the Christ and that we just, through time, there was a memory that got in the way of grievances and judgments that, that was not our reality.